So, good afternoon. Okay. Um, good afternoon. Um, I'm a researcher at Nova University in Portugal. For most of my professional life, I work with national energy system models, and I also work with European energy system models. And for a change, for the past two years, I work with cities. Uh, energy system models, and this is what I'm going to talk to you about. Uh, we don't have time to go into details into the modeling um, part. I don't think um, that is more important than to tell you how what what is different and what are perhaps the advantages of using um, modeling at a local level. Uh, it's in particular, big models that normally are used at European, even global level, and now we try to use it at uh, an urban level. So this was part of a, a European funded project that was concluded in March this year. Uh, we've implemented uh, it for four cities in across different countries in Europe. Uh, you might see there that they are not very big cities. Um, and um, I think this is really important because quite a lot of us in Europe live um, not in that big cities. Uh, and these are things we start, uh, we need to start thinking about when we talk about climate change and mitigation. Um, so just a short, short um, note on cities. I think you're perhaps quite aware of the, the importance that cities are gaining in the climate uh, mitigation arena and other in, in also in other arenas. Um, so most of us live in cities in Europe. Uh, nowadays, if I'm not wrong, we are 73% of the population lives in cities. Um, cities at the world level represent a very high share of the GDP um, and they represent, and this is really important, 70% of total energy-related CO2 emissions. Um, and um, cities more and more have been taking a step forward and voluntarily commit to reduce uh, carbon emissions. And so this is a really nice uh, initiatives that uh, you're perhaps aware of out there where mayors come together and say, we want to have a low carbon city. Uh, and then of course the question that comes is, ha, ah, but how are we going to do it? Uh, and this is what the INSPART project was um, trying to deal with. So uh, there are in place a number of uh, initiatives. Uh, they are perhaps you're aware of the sustainable energy action plans uh, of the Covenant of Mayors. And this is where cities commit to lower their emissions by 20% in 2020 and, now, and by 2030. And normally they do this with um, simple uh, or as simple as possible forecasts on what will happen to the city uh, in, uh, until 2020 or 2030. These forecasts are normally very sector specific. They are not integrated. So basically we think what will happen uh, to buildings or we think what will happen in the waste sector and we see how much emissions uh, we can lower uh, and then we put it, sum it all together and this is what will happen, uh, this is what we commit to. And we think we can take this one step further because a city is an energy system. There's also other systems in there. There are energy flows and there are interactions. Uh, and that's why we wanted to do within Smart Project. Also, I think it's very important. We've been talking about stakeholders today quite a lot. At the city level, this becomes perhaps even more important uh, because uh, people can recognize themselves in their city block or in their city region. So we have to be extra careful. So not only um, it is perhaps easier, I would say, at the national model level or European model level to, to say we will have uh, zero carbon emission zones in the major city center areas. Uh, and this is uh, a nice thing to say, but if you go to a mayor and to a city and you tell the people, well, from uh, five years from now, uh, you will not be able to drive your car into the city center, uh, you're sure th that you will have to deal with some opposition. So a very important thing is to involve uh, people from the beginning and also to get not perfect foresight technologies, but technologies and solutions that are socially accepted. And these are some of the challenges that become even more important at city level. Um, so this was our approach. Uh, we looked at uh, several parts of the city. Uh, when we talk about cities, we are talking about buildings, and this is private uh, sector buildings. There is also residential buildings, and very important, 
there are uh, buildings that are managed by the municipality. So this was something that was already interesting for us because for me, being an energy system modeler, I, would, uh, I had a lot of discussions with the city technicians where I tell them, but your buildings do not consume energy, almost energy at all, if you look at the whole of the city. And they say, yes, but I really need to lower the carbon foot footprint of the buildings I manage. So there is already interesting scales issues and expectations to deal with. Um, of course, very, very important are transport in the cities and also how to deal with the transport coming into the city, inside the city. Uh, and this is something that traditionally cities do not look into when, they, when we talk about energy so much. They look into when they talk about um, air quality emissions and congestion, but not from an energy perspective. So that was also something interesting to start uh, building a new mindset looking into transport. Um, uh, and so we have, uh, as I said before, the idea was to look at all these uh, energy flows in all these sectors, also taking into account uh, the city, the so-called city support systems, like uh, um, energy use for water supply and water treatment and waste management, um, and then put it all together in one planning platform, uh, which was based on an energy system model that is technology rich, which is the TIMES <laughs> model. Uh, we did all this together as much as we could with city energy stakeholders, or sorry, not city energy stakeholders, with city stakeholders. So this was private companies, this was um, schools even, uh, they, and there were of course the city planners. <coughs> and also some NGOs were involved. Um, so just again, these were the sectors we have to deal with. Um, I think I mentioned all of them, just one thing in the end that was really important and is gaining a lot of importance for cities, which is how much renewable electricity or renewables can you use in your city. Uh, and this is something that in many, many cases it is not known. And um, uh, the cities do not know this, so we have come up with an relatively simple methodology to assess, in this case, PV potential, which was found to be the most important in the, our city case studies. Um, so I told you about a city energy system model, so it was based on TIMES, uh, probably some of you know about TIMES model generator, or generator from the International Energy Agency. Um, you're not expected to remember all of this, but basically you should just know that there is uh, all sectors uh, of the energy system are in the model. Um, there is normally primary energy supply, which in a city most of the times is imported uh, because you don't want to have a coal mine next to your city. Uh, so it's outside my model. And then there is energy conversion uh, that in many cases in the city is imported. So electricity, gas and heat that comes into the city and in some other cases is generated in the city. And this is important because we wanted to look at synergies and what heat, for example, can be transferred from one part to the city of the city to others, how much PV can you have, these type of things. And then perhaps more important at city level, we have the end use sectors that I told you about. Um, so what we have, this is an optimization model. It runs, we were running it until 2030, so not that far away in time. And basically what we want to do is to see, uh, be considering different scenarios of evolution of the city, what's going to happen to emissions <coughs> and energy consumption. Just a short uh, feature on the model. Uh, in this case, uh, we have modeled different households with different income levels because the whole model is geographically explicit you can pinpoint with the data you have areas of the city that are poorer than others. And then your investor has to choose, uh, basically, if you're going to spend your money insulating your house or driving your car. So this was uh, very quickly some difference. The type of scenarios uh, cities look into are not just typical energy um, mitigation or renewable energy targets, but things like what will be the impact if I build a new district in my city uh, that is not connected to the district heating network or what will happen if I build if we build what what does this mean for transportation so th these were the type of things we were looking at um, just a short note to say that our um, city models have to be very geographically geographically explicit uh, with lots of zones for the city which is painful to model but it is really really important to communicate results 
Of course, it brings with it the, the problem that if you make a mistake, it's going to be very visible and someone will find it very soon. So it's a challenge. Um, just to say that out of the model, we get lots of the normal quantitative um, results, uh, investments, emission reductions uh, of the different uh, minimal cost options. But we didn't stop there because the idea is to get the options that are socially accepted. So uh, we take the, the results from a normal times energy system model, if I may say so, and we used it into a multi-criteria decision analysis with four different groups of stakeholders. So for me as a modeler, it was excruciating to find my model results being uh, <laughs> massacred by different stakeholders that were telling me this is totally unacceptable, you cannot have this option. Uh, so. Um, in the end, I hope through this process, I learned a lot and we got uh, options that are probably really going to be implemented in the city. At least that was the commitment at the end of the project. Um, so just to finalize some lessons that were not the ones we were expecting to get from the project and that the cities told us. And I think this is really nice because we all learn together. So uh, very importantly for some of the cities was that they did not even know what was their energy footprint their, and their energy system in already today. And they got to learn this. And this is not trivial because it is really important to... to understand where you're consuming energy. Some other um, things that were very important for the municipalities in the project was that they created an energy community and energy thinking inside the municipality because normally some people talk about urban planning, some other people talk about carbon mitigation, some other people talk about waste management and they don't talk to each other. But uh, at least within the project they had a common language to deal with. And just to conclude, um, I think the challenge that we we are trying, this is where we are trying to get, so hopefully more and more in the future, um, and it has to do with changing lifestyles and really changing um, uh, the way we do things to, to fight climate change or to adapt to climate change, is really to shift from perhaps urban planning as such and start thinking about urban planning as energy planning or both together. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, Steve Pye from University College London. Um, I, can you say something about why you chose um, an optimization based model to do this kind of city scale analysis? I can imagine it would be quite a challenge uh, given that you might want to think about different agents in the city, um, different decision makers, lots more around policy simulation. I wonder why you went um, in that direction. And, a, and, a, and another second very quick question. How come Nottingham has such a low uh, per capita CO2? Uh, I think it was around three, whereas the UK average is around eight. So just interested on that. Take the other question. Okay. Um, Valentin Birch from BSRI in Dublin. Uh, my question is actually, you mentioned multi-criteria uh, analysis in the end. What criteria did you consider and how were the different criteria you considered elicited? Um, and related to that, um, was that very similar or very different between the different cities? So that the different cities you looked at have very different or very similar preferences. Um, what was important for them in their decision making? And then last question. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I'm asking myself how your methodology, how and whether your methodology would be applicable not only to this five or four cities you have have been selected, but also let's say to the to the global scale. Um, um, and this is in the light that we know that um, yeah, from country to country we have different city definitions, well, the first thing. And the second thing is that we also know, if we compare them um, in, in terms of emissions, for example, that we know that structural elements have something to do with the emission. And the second point is that we also know that cities are doing more with less in comparison to the countryside. And add one thing, how time, how time consuming is it for you to calibrate your model to a specific city? Okay, okay. Let's, uh, if I forget something, just uh, let me know. Um, optimization instead of agent-based modeling. Um, 
It was, again, excruciating. Uh, and myself, during the course of the project, I thought many times, why don't we just do something with agent-based modeling? But I think in the end, uh, um, it was really useful because uh, we needed optimization, really, to think, again, this is, again, what-if scenarios. And people were not looking at synergies or normally are not finding this, the synergies and the and, um, interrelations between the, the different city sectors. And in this way, we could really look into it. Having said that, I, I have uh, in my uh, list a wish list one day to complement this with agent-based modeling, but I still, I'm very biased and I still think um, if we overcome the painful uh, process, it is really useful to have optimization here. Um, Nottingham, I do not know, they gave me the figure, you have to ask the city council, so <laughs> that was an easy one for me, just I can tell you who gave me the figure, <laughs> and, <laughs> and you ask them, I don't know what they did with electricity imports, for example, I don't know, um, MCDA, um, what criteria, uh, basically we set the criteria together with the four groups of stakeholders in the cities, so we did not come up with them, um, so it, they were very different across cities, I know that in Greece they had 12 or 15 different criteria, super technical, uh, and in some other cities they, all, they were concerned with um, increasing jobs, for example, uh, social acceptability was not perceived in the same way across cities. Then the ranking of the criteria, they were decided in workshops with the stakeholders. Um, and then we had four groups of stakeholders, that was also very interesting, at least for me, that I'm not from this field, to, to came to a point where you have totally different rankings, if you see it from the perspective of an investor, a city planner, or an NGO. Uh, another thing that comes to that, that uh, I realized that really helps to engage stakeholders, is that if you have a ranking of options, people really start to pay attention. Because before I was just giving them some charts, but if you start ranking things, everyone says, oh, Wait, what's in there? Um, so, the global scale. I'm not sure if you mean to get cities to get this done for other cities globally. Okay, if so, I do not know, but I hope it is possible because I, we have just started a project <laughs> where we are trying to come up with. Um, we are building a generic, very simplified structure for these times models for cities that can be downloaded and run by other cities, and we are really. Let's see how successful we are. We are now doing it with an Austrian city, very small one, Malmo, uh, and another city in Portugal. So the idea is that hopefully, yes, we'll be able to do something. Um, and the question was on the time consuming? That answers my question. A lot, yes, it was very time consuming, yeah. Super. Thank you very much, I think it was very interesting. Laurent?